England have beaten Ireland at Twickenham. The Grand Slam for 2024 is gone. And look what it means to English fans. Donald Lenehan, an absorbing contest. Not the right result for Ireland, but what a contest nonetheless. It was an incredible contest right from the start. England were written off coming into it. But uh, they're a proud team, proud players, proud nation. And they've delivered. But uh, hats off to Ireland too. They were uh, shoulder to the wheel right from the moment they lost Calvin Nash after a couple of minutes. But England, it's their time, their moment. Uh, Ireland still one win away from the championship with the Grand Slam gone. There'll be no back-to-back. -back. No first ever one in the Six Nations. Uh, England, incredible. Ireland hits left bow. Well, you can see it written on the faces of the Irish players. Bundy Aki, another incredible performance. Hugo Keenan as well. But it wasn't enough. And, you know, when we look back in this game and... When everybody reflects on this, you have to tip your hat to the best thing, the performance we have seen in quite some yeah, time. For a long, long time, England were unrecognisable right from the outset. I mean, I think uh, Bordwick, to be fair, he's unearthed a, a, a lot of good young players, a lot of backs in particular, but they had to back themselves. Uh, you think back to Murrayfield only a week ago where they had 25 handling errors, uh, 22 handling errors, 25 turnovers much more clinical today now they did have penalty advantage in the end but Marcus Smith he uh, took his moment to write his name into history you can see what it means to him the man with him there Feo both I think he's had an excellent game as well Ben Earl superb and uh, it's just not to be for Ireland not to be for Ireland full time score for Twickenham England 23 Ireland 22 Hugh Dono, thank you. Bernard, I'm not quite sure what to say after that. What a, what a game, first yeah, of all. Yeah, oh, what a game, but we've got to say congratulations to England. They, they deserve that win. Um, you know, they missed a few kicks. They were the ones who, who, who took, Ireland, uh, took Ireland's source of possession away, slowed down a breakdown, had a big dominant carries, went after our line, and scored some phenomenal tries. And, you know, it, we think we did enough to win it there with that second James Lowe try, but they go and find a way. And, um, and like, they're... When they needed the performance in the last year, semi-final against South Africa, and today they found something different, and that, that could launch them as a team because, as Donald said, they found some good young players who may they, they maybe build a team around. There was something from the start of the day, Stephen. We noticed it from the anthems. This place was alive with England today. They did everything right. Yeah, they certainly did, and uh, I've never been as nervous watching a game sitting on the sideline. It just it kept to and fro and flip-flopping each way, and I think England thoroughly deserved the victory today. I, I really do. I think they, they should have scored more points. I think it was 10 points missed off the kick and tee. They looked more threatening in attack. Ireland just couldn't find their stride. And I said it at half time that I thought it would come at some stage, but they just couldn't prolong it for uh, enough period of time. So congratulations to England. It was a fantastic test match, a really good spectacle. It really was. But from an Irish point of view, Jamie, it just seemed like nothing went right. Why on, on an occasion like this? Oh, what Bertie was saying, I don't think England, you've got to give England credit here. They, they came out with a, a game plan against Ireland to, to shut down a lot of what Ireland do really, really well and not let Ireland into the game and not let them have ball in certain areas. And then took their opportunity when they came. You know, we were thinking Ireland going to kick into another gear, you know, after, after kicking all the points in the first half. And, but it's not even often when you look back, we usually have a try or two in the bag in the first half. You know, we were kicking all our points here. It was... It was. Uh, I, I'm more disappointed for for Ireland not being able to hit there. They'll be frustrated because they couldn't get into the game. But you got to give England all the credit here because they they played a lot of really good rugby. It's the best performance we've seen in a long time from them. They sh their their D was a lot better. They shut down a lot of Ireland. Very aggressive with it and uh, they took the score as well. Yeah, credit to Felix Jones as well, to be fair. We've seen elements of what he has been implementing here, and he deserves enormous credit for turning things around. Maybe it's not perfect, but there was a lot of good stuff there. Yeah, and it's, and it's across the board. So we all, we, when we showed the clips, we showed that blitz defence. And at first, they caught us behind the game a few times, but it's it's been able to get after the line there. It's been able to win the odd scrum penalty. It's been able to, to kick well. It's been able to, you know, I suppose, 
Uh, throw possession yourself. And I thought when they carried at us, they had more powerful ball carriers than, than we had. And, you know, Bundy Aki for Ireland really stood up. But apart from that, where was the big Joe McCarthy carries? Where was the Dan Sheen carries? We just we just didn't weren't able to run over people at times. And, and because of that, England, I thought, were actually quite comfortable. Yeah. And we were limited to two opportunities which we took. But... Yeah, well, they, was, they, was some of that burned because we had to go to the bench early? You know, the Calvin Nash things happens, Kieran Frawley happens, so suddenly we have to rejig and reshape. And I know they talk about adversity, but they probably had to do it a little sooner than they thought. Yeah, for sure. But when you look at some of the tight games we've won, you can say the, op the opposition probably had injuries yeah. as well. I mean, the 6 2 split with that early injury to Nash put us under pressure. Like at the end of the game, I know Conor Murray put up a great box kick, but probably. You know, and Gibson Park did well in the wing as an isolated winger, but realistically, aren't we at our best when Gibson Park is is injecting speed into the game? And we, we didn't have that flow at all in the last 20 minutes. I don't think we were allowed to get into the flow, even when Jameson was at nine. I think England were very good at, at just slowing the pace. And, and we said beforehand, if Ireland control the tempo, they're going to be in a good place. They didn't control the tempo for large portions of this game. England did, and, and you have to give credit to England for that. They talked earlier about being physical, about doing the things, going after lineouts. When you look at the big players, Martin, Atoje, what they did, Chesham, like they were the big players for England, and they put in an enormous performance today. Yeah, they did, and, and just to touch on Bernard's point there, Ireland's big players didn't yeah. really yeah. stand up, and you know the yellow card, Peter Romani, he probably didn't have his best day even before he got yellow carded, and then you know, springing Ryan Baird, I'm sure Andy Farrell would have loved to have brought him on a little bit earlier for an injection of physicality and athleticism, but the English players, we know they've always had it, but when you're not catching and passing and dropping too many balls against other teams, you can't get into a flow. Today, everything's stuck. They sort some cracking tries. If We'd be waxing lyrical about it if, if Ireland were doing the same thing. Yeah. So for me, huge physicality. Their forwards really stood up, and unfortunately for Ireland, they just couldn't match it. Do you know, though, Bernard, it is another day where Ireland could have won that game. You know, very similar to the New Zealand game. We're not absolutely on it. But it's still right at the death that that gets snatched away. These, these are the fine margins. Like, they weren't a million miles away today. They were just slightly off. Yeah, slightly off. But like, I think, like, so we go ahead, we try to exit, we miss touch, and next thing they're back on top of us, the next thing we, we give away a penalty, I think Hendo gets caught on the wrong side. And we just look porous. I mean, the more England had the ball and Marcus Smith coming on, they just looked like we were on the back foot. We just never really got a, a, a real foothold in, in defensively. All right, well, let's hear from the Irish camp now. Caelan Doris is with Clare. Caelan in the balance right up until the end there, but guttingly for you, just that one point loss. Just sum up for us how you're feeling right now. Yeah, gutting the way it finished. Um, it was a proper test match back and forth throughout. Um, we definitely didn't underestimate them. We've seen what they're capable of. We saw how well they went in the World Cup coming third. Um, we're disappointed with definitely aspects of our game throughout. They put us under pressure, which explains some of it, but some of it was in our control, definitely. Um, but still, a big week ahead, still a lot on stake next week, so we're going to have to dust ourselves down quickly and get excited for that. So you look to have weathered so many storms throughout the game. Why weren't you right at the top of it as opposed to today? Yeah, we felt they'd fired a lot of shots in that first half. We were pretty content going into half-time, being up a couple of points. Um, but they just kept going in the second half. We had a few purple patches where we got on top, but they kept battling through and uh, yeah, came down to the last minute. Did you know all the talk of favouritism and I suppose the expectation, did that play a part at all? I don't think so. I think um, we relish on that and we, we have a lot of belief in what we can do. Um, we respected them all week and knew what they were capable of and yeah, they showed us today. Sam is gone, as you say, but a championship still to play for in Dublin. Yeah, massively exciting to be back in the Aviva, playing in Scotland, who have gone well throughout the championship. So, big game to finish off, and yeah, hopefully we can finish on a good note. Thanks, Caelan. Well, in fairness, Stephen, he's, he's saying they're going to try and get it back yeah, up yeah. for it next week. That's going to be tough. Yeah, I'd say they're all devastated. Uh, devastated, just obviously losing the game, but just the performance, because yeah. I know there's so much more. And even chatting to a few people before we came on air, they're closer to the camp than we are. They were all buzzing, really excited. You know, they were going to put in a hell of a shift today, and it didn't happen. And the reason for that is because of England. England just got on top of them, pressure game. Their kicking was better, um, right areas of the pitch, and you know they got their attack going. And Ireland would be extremely disappointed that they didn't give themselves an opportunity to win back-to-back -back Grand Slams next week. Yeah, well, as Claire said, the Grand Slam is gone. The championship is still on the table in that final game against Scotland next weekend.